Today's video is what it's like having a resin 3D printer after six months. So originally I made a video about the Elugu Mars 5 Ultra and it was my first ever dive into resin 3D printing. So I made a video about unboxing it, setting up and doing my very first 3D prints. And it was certainly an experience. So here we are six months later and I thought it was time to do a little update on my experience with resin 3D printing. So first of all, the original video was done in February. I got sent the printer by Elugu. Now, unfortunately, because I live in Scotland, in February it is very cold. And resin 3D printing is better in warmer climates or just a warmer time of year. So I've definitely had an easier experience, I would say, with it during the summer rather than the winter. I've also had, thankfully, some technical issues resolve themselves. So in the original video, the camera for the printer just did not work at all. It gave nothing but static. That was even, of course, with the lens cap removed that comes default on it. But with a software update that came later in the year, the camera just started working. So that was great. And that's incredible because you can remotely check how your 3D prints are doing, which is a very nice feature to have, especially built in at the default price, which is cool. Also, my initial experience with resin 3D printing was just mess. Just tons of like paper towels everywhere and plenty of toxic garbage that you can't just simply throw out or put down drains and stuff like that. So you have to be very smart and go about the rules of your country when disposing of them. But I'll certainly say this, the mess that I'm making now is easily one tenth and I've got it down to where I have just a small area where I can do all my resin stuff and that's where the mess is contained and then cleaning up from there is a lot easier. And I've also found myself batch printing as much as possible on the build plate rather than doing like let's say a figurine at a time so that when I do a one print I'm doing maybe like three four different things and then go to clean it all up and that way I'm just doing less cleaning overall. And then certainly doing it in the summer instead of the winter has been a lot easier too. And one tip I've seen online which was really good was the resin in your IPA alcohol that you use to clean the 3D prints, it will settle over time at the bottom of the bottle. So what I'll try and do is at least have a month between every 3D print so that just completely settles. And then I expose that to UV light to solidify the stuff at the bottom. And it then obviously means I've got cleaner IPA to work with. And it's a good way to contain all what, what is the liquid resin uh, into a single container, which is quite good as well. It's of course then easier to dispose of at a later point. But we should also talk about the toxicity of this stuff. So it stinks, it's not good for your lungs to breathe in, it's not good to touch the liquid resin, even though uh, if you get it on your hands, you could pop outside and just get some UV light from the sun on it and it you know, solidifies, that's not good because it's touched your skin and it's been absorbed by your skin not good so you have to be very very careful use gloves all the time and i would say by far it's the thing i'm the most worried about for long-term resin use and it's another reason i'm doing batch prints rather than doing like single things at a time i like to bring this printer out say once a month do a, a bunch of prints in one go and then put it away for a month you know and not expose myself to those chemicals for a very long time it's also an advantage of course in the summer because i can open up the windows and doors and everything and get air moving in because I live in a one bedroom flat and definitely the experience is going to be better if you have much more room to work with and you have a hot climate so you can actually just get the uh, windows open whenever using this stuff. And it's not just simply toxic as well, it does stink and it is not a nice smell to have around. But then the 3D prints themselves are just sensational and the quality is just through the freaking roof. And for me who's only been into 3D printing now for like two or three years, it's incredible to have just seen where it was when I started to where it is now. And it's just like, wow. And of course, there is other 3D printers out there with this kind of quality that you can get. But they all seem to be huge machines and are way more expensive. So the resin right now is in this sweet spot of being small machines, kind of affordable. And the resin itself, quite affordable too. And overall, it's just quite cool to work with. Now, for me, I'm still defaulting most of my 3D prints to just PLA on my Creality K1. But when it comes to like every so often, I'll find a 3D print that's a figurine or something like that. And the details are really high. And I'm like, I really want to print that and keep the details. And that's when I then go to the resin 3D printer, print it off. And I'm like, damn, every single time I'm like shocked at how good the quality is. And that brings us now to actually my most recent 3D prints with the resin to show you how things are going. So I printed off a Highland cow, some unicorns and a Scottish terrier. So these were made to actually be gifts. And I thought that uh, printing these off in resin would be such good quality that they would be incredible gifts to give away. Because the 
uh, PLA stuff, you can make some cool things, but usually not figurines that look good. So the resin here was definitely the right choice to make these for my family that live in Norway. And these were quite an enjoyable experience to print, but it wasn't all plain sail. And I did have, I think, a problem with suction onto the build plate where I had a hole to reduce that, but I think it was too small a hole. And as a result, it almost peeled itself off the build plate and I would have had a failure. I was very lucky that it didn't and it printed uh, successfully. A little bit wonky at the bottom, but I was able to fix that. So I almost had a complete failure. I'm still learning with re resin 3D printer for sure. And to me, that is a bit more of a worry compared to a PLA printer. If it fails halfway through, it sucks. But a resin 3D printer failing halfway through the print, I'm not sure how I would enjoy the cleanup of that experience. And let's move on now to the conclusion of this video. So first of all, I'll say that resin 3D printing right now for me is the most affordable, high quality 3D print. Like to the point of where you print something off and it looks like it could have come from a factory. It's that good. Where of course, if I'm printing something off in PLA or something like that, you can tell that it's 3D printed. You can see the layer lines. Whereas with resin, it's pretty much perfection. But saying that, it's also not perfection. You do have the support struts and all that things. And you do, if you want everything to look perfect, you're going to have to do some good cleanup at the end of the day to make everything perfection. But still, I think it's incredible. And to me, most of my supports, I probably could figure out how to reduce them just based on orientation. And I think that comes more from just printing more and more stuff. And I'll probably get to the point of having less and less supports and doing a better job of having things be as clean as possible when I'm pulling them out of the printer itself. And then of course, less cleanup afterwards. Now, when it comes to the conclusion for the mess and all that, I will say the mess is a lot less than it was, but I would definitely, if you're in my position in a one bedroom flat or apartment, I wouldn't go for this. I'd only recommend going into resin 3D print if you have like spare room or potentially an outside shed or something like that you can work in. And you have to remember, you don't want to be exposing your printer to the sunlight or stuff like that. So you really have to be internal, which means an internal room or an internal structure outside to really take advantage of 3D printing with the resin printer. Uh, of course, you want decent temperatures as well. And one advantage I do have is I've got a small shared garden, which is a great place to go put all the waste, like paper towels and stuff like that, so they can ex be exposed to the UV light and solidify out there and not be the liquid resin anymore. But I will mention again that I do make a lot less mess now to the point of where I've got less than a bags full of trash now when it comes to every 3D print. And that's by far the thing I've learned the most. And then when it comes to whether or not you should get into resin 3D printing, my suggestion here would be that it is definitely a pain in the butt. And as a result, if you're curious about trying it out and giving it a go, I'd say go for it. However, if you're not particularly good with adapting to new things, you might find this way too overwhelming. And then I will also say, if you're thinking about doing this as a business, let's say printing figurines and selling them regularly, I wouldn't do it because... I don't know how the health concerns are going to be over continuous long-term exposure to this stuff, honestly. Like, I think in five, ten years' time, we're going to find out that there's really bad side effects to using this regularly. And that's another reason why I quite happily sit back and maybe wait a full month before printing something else. Again, I would not want to be using this stuff daily. But if you want to print off figurines or something every so often, I think this is absolutely brilliant. And it's certainly been a very fun learning experience. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.